Welcome to Real Turkey channel, the only or one of the few Turkish YouTube channels that broadcasts in English. We do politics, economy, business news, and nowadays health news because there is a corona pandemic and the baby is named COVID-19. I am shooting this video on Saturday uh, around uh, 4 p.m. Turkish time and there are only five, just a second, I'm sorry. There are only five corona cases in Turkey, all in a single cluster. Uh, I hope there aren't more, but uh, judging from the experience of other countries and our very porous international borders with Iran, Iraq, Syria, all just boiling with virus, uh, one should expect a, a, a scenario where Turkey does develop several clusters of corona cases and perhaps an epidemic. But all of that depends on how long this menace will last and whether uh, the Turkish government uh, will be able to educate the public about how to protect himself or herself from infection. And so far they are doing a good job. Not my personal opinion. The World Health Organization has praised Turkey for its preemptive measures. And indeed the government is really very actively trying to forbid Corona from entering Turkey. Nevertheless, even if there is no full outbreak in Turkey, there would be an economic damage. And this is the subject of today's video. The pandemic catches Turkey at a very bad time. Uh, so let's start with a description of the Turkish economy as of February, because March data is yet to arrive. And in brief, what I can say is that the fourth quarter 2009 growth momentum, which chalked up 6% annualized growth in GDP, has decelerated substantially in January and February, despite a massive credit boom. How do I know? Well, January industrial production declined 0.2% month on month. Fine, it happens. Retail turnover, uh, one of the most important preliminary indicators of consumption, declined by 0.2% uh, in January as well. Consumer confidence, we have all the way January, February data and two institutions, both TWIC and Bloomberg HT, a private broadcaster, which has nothing to do with Bloomberg International, have reported that consumer confidence has started declining again. And finally, the government announced measures uh, that would make it harder for banks to issue consumer credit. Uh, which means that uh, major purchases such as homes, I'm sorry, not homes, homes, homes are not covered. Uh, autos, uh, furniture, kitchen appliances will be hard to come by for the middle class. Turkey wasn't in recession, but Turkey was suffering from slowing growth. And now uh, the corona shock is going to cause ripples across the Turkish economy. The net result of which I estimate at this point would be negative in the sense that it would further uh, decelerate economic growth. Let's start from the positive side. Assuming there is no full on outbreak in Turkey, uh, some of the uh, export orders from Asia by EU uh, wholesalers uh, and you know, main brands are shifting to Turkey. That's shoes, leatherware, textiles, etc., etc. Anything uh, that's labor intensive. Secondly, Turkey uh, still imports a lot of its energy from abroad, and economists calculate that every ten dollar drop drop in a barrel of Brent saves Turkey roughly four billion dollars in current account deficits. So Brent dropped about 20 bucks per barrel over the last week or so. Turkey immediately saved something like $20 billion. These are the positives, but there are negatives. Uh, and I want to start with the great imponderable uh, confidence. As you know, modern exp economies are forward-looking 
And as Keynes said about 100 years ago, it is the animal spirits that drive an economy. If the Turkish people believe that there will be a coronavirus outbreak and that it would severely impair, uh, you know, exports, trade, tourism, etc., etc., of course, they would be worried about their jobs, uh, about capacity utilization in their factories, if they are business leaders, thus uh, private consumption and fixed investment may stop in its trail. Obviously, I'm not willing to go that far, but uh, you can sense a mood of panic in the country. I don't think that's unique to Turkey. It happens everywhere. I wish I could show you photos, but they're all copyrighted. Market shelves are empty. Uh, household cleaning goods, basic staples, and toilet paper. I mean, if it is the end of the world, I wouldn't worry about toilet paper. Any leaf would do, but hey, what can I say? Um, so, uh, you know, we are sensing some mood of panic. And the government measures, such as uh, sending all primary, secondary schools and colleges on vacation, uh, ordering all uh, sports exhibitions to be played with an audience are absolutely necessary. And I, I praise the government for being so bold as to take these measures. But obviously, they also add to a sense of panic. Remember, we live in a country where we don't necessarily trust the government. In that sense, we may be like the Americans. So as the government passes these measures almost every hour nowadays, uh, a lot of people are thinking, ah, these bastards are hiding something from us. So let's run to the supermarket and buy more toilet paper. So this confidence effect is something I can measure, but it's going to drastically curtail uh, economic activities. I think people will shy away from restaurants. Domestic tourism will be affected. Interstate or intrastate travel might be affected. People may visit uh, fewer uh, movies or theaters, opera, ballet, which is a major concern to me because before I die, I would like to visit an opera or ballet. There are also measurable effects which are getting worse by the day and obviously would magnify if coronavirus pandemic lasts throughout the Northern Hemisphere summer. The major concern is tourism. Tourism roughly generates $30 billion uh, of foreign currency for Turkey, but it's also extremely labor intensive. And it's sort of like a magnet for all the upstream industries from food uh, to, to kitchenware, to entertainment, uh, to uh, sun cream, you name it. Uh, so its actual share in terms of the multiplier effect in the economy could be as high as 10%. And one thing is certain, since the government asked tourists not to visit our lovely country until the end of April, the first uh, trimester of the tourism season is lost. So far, the estimated losses are about $7 billion. But if we're going to lose the summer as well, not necessarily because there is a coronavirus outbreak in Turkey, but because uh, our visitors, the Russians, the Europeans, the Arabs, uh, are reluctant to leave their countries, the damage could be as high as $20 billion. It all depends on what happens in the summer. Trade, of course, is the second channel that exhibits sign, signs of stress in the sense that Iran and Iraqi borders are shut down. And I think the government is starting to shut down uh, Syrian border gates as well. The trade with Iran dwindled substantially so that it's not a significant amount, but trade with Iraq, I think Iraq was one of our top five trading partners. Uh, if it stops, that's going to be a major problem. 48% or 50% of our top five trading partners. Uh, if it stops, that's going to be a major problem. 48% or 50% of our EU turns uh, into several castles surrounded by high walls, not allowing visitors or goods from other countries. Turkish trade, foreign trade, would take a massive, massive hit. Along with these, uh, of course, calls co comes civic aviation, you know, 
flights are cancelled as it is everywhere. Turkish Airlines, Pegasus Airlines, Sun Air, uh, they're all going to suffer. Uh, I don't know how much they're going to suffer. Depends on their fixed costs. Uh, the new Istanbul airport, which costs something like 25 billion euros, apparently has witnessed a significant drop in visitors and transit passengers for obvious reasons. Uh, paying back the financing costs and the concession fee to the government is going to be a problem. That's going to be true for most of the airports uh, that are uh, that, that 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 are being uh, leased to the private, which is significant in Turkey. Turks love movies, as Europeans do. Our soccer clubs could go bankrupt because an important share of their revenues are from attendance and for the next two, three weeks, there shall be no attendance. Uh, most importantly, I'm worried about banks. Uh, Turkish banks, officially speaking, have a bad loan to total loan ratio of 5%, but everyone knows this is not true. Uh, a lot of loans which ought to be bad are kept on artificial respiration and kept alive. Uh, and a lot of them have been rescheduled. Most of those rescheduled loans are in energy and uh, uh, construction industry. Now, both of these industries are indirectly under threat again, in the sense that, uh, as I said, if there is a major confidence loss, people would also postpone their purchases of homes, which would further uh, even if the prices have gone down, if a country is consuming and investing less, it will also consume less energy. And all the utilities and electricity producers would see reduced cash flows. All of that will end up in bank balance sheets. We may see another round of bad debts being written off, another round of major reschedulings. Most importantly, I'm sure if you read about the economic impact of coronavirus, uh, you see central banks cutting rates and governments announcing stimulus packages one after another. This is becoming very difficult in Turkey simply because the central bank policy rate is already below the rate of inflation, which means Turkey has a real negative rate. And our fiscal deficits, excluding one-off items, expenditures which are difficult to ca cut, we also have uh, the expenditures related to our Syrian domi dominions, such as defending Idlib or um, the, the area uh, Turkey controlled to the east of Euphrates. As you know, nowadays wars are extremely expensive. So for the government uh, to borrow more, to inject income into troubled industries and the, you know, involuntarily unemployed as people quarantine themselves at home is going to be difficult. It's going to raise budget deficits and it's going to crowd out private sector loans. Finally, uh, along the lines of this argument, as of Friday, Turkey's CDS premium jumped to 500 basis points. And bond yields, I think, uh, since the beginning of this corona crisis, uh, have soared by over 200 basis points across the yield curve. And euro bonds, Turkish euro bonds, were under heavy selling pressure. Uh, some of this is because, you know, people don't trust the AKP administration, but a lot of it is because we're seeing a credit crunch developing in the global markets. If that lasts, countries like Turkey, which have very low credit ratings, were junk, essentially, single A or single B. No, I'm not single A, not single A, single B, essentially, will have a hard time borrowing from abroad, which is going to hurt both our major corporates and our banks, which will not be able to lend to the government. Obviously, none of this is good, uh, but uh, this is my most likely uh, bad case scenario. The good case scenario would be as several... Turkish uh, epidemiologists or virologists suggest uh, the coronavirus will die in the summer. The global medicine community doesn't yet quite accept that hypothesis. But if all of this blows up, blows off in the next two months, uh, Turkey will be able to pick up its pieces 
and start growing again. Otherwise, as the rest of the world, we're doomed for recession and potentially a currency spasm in the sense that it is my wish, my sincere wish before I die from corona or any other infectious disease to say something positive about Turkey, which I love dearly. But unfortunately, these are bad times. These are the times of Corona, people. Stay well, stay healthy. Don't kiss anyone that you don't know very personally. Attila Eshler saying goodbye from Istanbul.